Hey everyone, so in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to build an ETF portfolio with $100. This is going to be a step-by-step -step A to Z guide for beginners who wanna start investing in ETFs. ETFs are by far my favorite stock investment, and it's truly an asset that I think everyone who wants to become a millionaire should have. Later on in the video, I'll take you guys through some platforms that will actually give you some free stocks to start out. And yeah, I'm super excited for this video. If you want, grab a notebook and take some notes as we'll be covering a lot of useful stuff. So without further ado, Let's get started. All right, so the first thing I wanna cover is what are ETFs? So ETF stands for Exchange Traded Funds, right? E is for exchange, T is for traded, F is for funds. And it's basically a type of pooled investment security. So how I like to think of it is it's a basket of stocks. So by buying an ETF, you're essentially holding multiple assets rather than buying one particular stock and only being invested in that one company. Usually ETFs are going to track a particular index, a sector, or a type of commodity. And the whole point is by buying one ETF, you're buying one basket full of different stocks or assets. Now, a great thing about ETFs is that they can actually be bought or sold on a stock exchange, just like normal stocks. And so they are very, very easy to buy and sell. So for example, let's say I really like tech stocks and I want to buy one Apple share. Well, when you buy that one Apple share, you are only invested in one particular company, Apple. However, if you really like tech stocks and you want to invest in multiple tech stocks all at once, one thing you do is actually buy a tech ETF. And by buying that, your money is basically essentially spread out over many different tech companies. Now, one great thing about ETFs is that many of them out there on the market actually offer really low expense ratios. We'll get more into this later on, but an expense ratio is just pretty much the fee you're paying to the company to basically handle that ETF. So for example, a 1% expense ratio is going to mean that for every $100 you have in that ETF, they're going to charge you a $1 fee per year. 1% is pretty high as we'll talk about later on. But yeah, there's so many out there that charge as low as like 0.03%. Another great thing about ETFs is that they tend to be more cost effective and more liquid compared to mutual funds and index funds. So yeah, overall, as an investor, you guys, buying and holding ETFs can be a very smart and low cost strategy to build generational wealth without taking on as much risk. And that's really why I love them so much. So now that we've talked about ETFs like that, let's go over some of the pros and cons. Pros are gonna be, of course, the low expense ratios. It costs very, very little to hold these ETFs. ETFs are also usually safer than individual stocks because you are basically diversified so you're spreading out the risk over multiple companies. That way, if one particular company goes out of business, then you're not gonna lose all your money. You're basically holding your eggs across different baskets within specific sectors. And we'll talk more about this later on, but holding ETFs can be very efficient when it comes to taxes, especially when you go into long-term investing for periods of one year or more. Now, there are some cons, right? So there are some actively managed ETFs that do have higher fees than our low cost ETFs. So you should be aware of those. Not all specific industries have ETFs and they're also not ideal for people that want to trade stocks and take higher risks. Yes, there are ETFs in more risky sectors and industries, but overall these ETFs are always going to be less risk than holding individual companies. And another is that if you really want high dividends, yes, there are some high dividend ETFs out there, but in general, your dividend yields are gonna be lower than holding particular individual stocks that do pay high dividends. Okay, so now let's talk about a question that is very, very common, and that is what is the difference between the ETF and an index fund? So ETFs can be traded throughout the day, and when ETFs are sold, the capital gains and losses are actually sent straight uh, to the stockholder. ETFs also usually have lower minimum investments, so you can really get started with as low as like a few dollars, and they are also gonna be more tax efficient than most index funds. Now, as for index funds, right, these can only be traded at the end of the trading day because index funds are only traded once per day. As a result, they are a little bit less liquid than holding ETFs. And yeah, when index funds are sold, the fund may have to sell stocks to pay investors for the shares. Index funds also usually have more fees from the constant rebound it is a bit more complicated. And yeah, that leads us to the question, which one is going to be better? And you know, I'll say it just really depends. I'll say that for most beginners watching this video, I'd actually recommend just getting started with ETFs. A lot of index funds actually have minimum requirements in terms of how much money you put in. For example, a lot of the Vanguard index funds out there actually have a $3,000 or more minimum investment. Whereas for ETFs, you can trade with much, much less. You can even buy partial shares on certain platforms if you want. But yeah, overall, you can't go wrong with either 
of these. So now let's talk about some more important information. So there are two main types of ETFs that I want to cover. You have your passive ETFs and you have your active ETFs. I'll be steering you guys more towards the passive ETFs since the cost to own them are just gonna be much, much less. But yeah, basically these are aiming to replicate the performance of a broader or more diverse index. For example, the S&P 500, right? So there are ETFs that actively track and try to mimic the S&P 500. So when you buy one share of that ETF, you're basically investing in the whole S&P 500. For example, two very popular ones are gonna be VOO and SPY. And then on the other hand, we have active ETFs. So these ones actually have portfolio managers that are making decisions about which securities to include in the portfolio. A very famous example of one of these is gonna be the ARK Innovation ETF. Usually there's a public figure or investor that's at the head of these types of ETFs. They're actively managing the portfolio of companies within that ETF. So yeah, it's gonna have higher fees than the passive ETFs. Now, when it comes to picking the right ETF, there are definitely some things that you should be looking at. For example, the expense ratio, which we briefly covered earlier. I think that is going to be the most important thing for most people, especially because these fees can really add up and compound over time. So a good principle that I like to live by is I try not to invest in any funds with an expense ratio that's higher than 1%. Basically at 1%, every $100 is going to cost $1 a year in management fees, and every $1,000 is gonna cost $10 a year in expenses. Now, as you can see that as you get bigger and bigger with your portfolio size, it's gonna really add up. So a $100,000 portfolio is gonna you know, cost $1,000 in fees every single year. And I know it doesn't seem like a large amount, maybe for some of the lower numbers, but even if you look at it and see the growth over time, you'll see that any expense ratio does sort of add up. And just like we have compound growth for gains, we also have compound growth for fees. Another thing you want to look at is the level of assets. So in my opinion, a good threshold is going to be at least $10 million in assets within that ETF. And that just shows that there is investor interest and decent liquidity in the ETF, right? If there's not that much liquidity, that means not too many people are buying and selling. So it is going to be harder to eventually sell out of your position. If an ETF has good liquidity, you can be confident in your ability to sell your shares on the market on a future date. Another thing to consider is the niche, right? So it's really good to consider what the ETF tracks in the market. This is very, very important. Now, in my opinion, I think it's generally better to invest in ETFs that track broad markets with volume rather than ones that track really narrow industries. That's just what I'm more comfortable investing in. And I think it's gonna be the same for a lot of you guys watching this video. Let's go over some examples of some very popular ETFs. We'll go into more detail on each of these later on. But yeah, these are some of the most popular ETFs that many, many people invest in. So I think for most beginners, if you have zero idea, you know, what you want to invest in, these are going to be some good choices that I encourage you to do some more due diligence on. First up is SPY SPY. This tracks the S&P 500. And you guys can see the current expense ratio is 0.09%. So while that is three times higher than the two Vanguard funds we're talking about, it is still very low. It's still under one tenth of a percent. As of right now, they have really good net assets of above $350 billion. And they have a three year daily total return as I'm making this video of 10.81%. If we look at the growth since its inception in 1993, we can see that it's up 751.66%. Next up is the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund. This is called VTI. This one tracks the broad US stock market as a whole. And it has a very, very low expense ratio of just 0.03%. It has fantastic net assets over $1 trillion. So this one is very liquid. It's very, very popular. And if you look at the three year daily total return, that's at 10.3%, and it's up 225.82% since its inception in 2001. Next, we have the Vanguard S&P 500 Index Fund, VOO. This is gonna be the fund that I have the most of my money in. It basically tracks the S&P 500, so the 500 largest companies in the US. It also has a very, very low expense ratio of just 0.03%, great net assets, and the three-year daily total return is 10.82%, and it's grown about 240% since its inception in 2010. It used to be much higher, but of course, we've seen some pretty big pullbacks in the stock market. So yeah, that's why all of the gains are not as big as they once were. But that doesn't mean it can be a pretty good time to buy. So now let's talk about how you can actually get started investing in ETFs with as low as $100. So first, you're gonna to want to sign up for a brokerage that allows you to buy and sell stocks. For a lot of beginners, I just recommend going with something like Webull. I personally use them. I have a multiple six-figure portfolio on this app. And yeah, they're super, super good, super easy. And if you guys want to actually sign up using my link down below, they're gonna give you a ton of free stocks. This is for a limited time only. So yeah, I really, really encourage you guys, go do that right now, pause the video. This is one of the best beginner investing platforms out there. There's also another platform 
platform called Moomoo. This is one that I also use as well. They also have zero commission fees, very easy to use, lots of powerful tools. And they're also giving out a ton of free stocks when you sign up and make your first deposit. So what I actually just recommend doing is sign up for both Weeble and Moomoo if you haven't already. You'll get a ton of free stocks. And that's really going to kickstart your portfolio. So right now I have Weeble pulled up on my phone. I'm just gonna show you guys how you can actually, you know, purchase your first ETF right now. And you can see I have Spy open on my account. This is gonna be one of the most popular ETFs that a lot of beginners get. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna come here to trade. And here's where we're gonna actually be able to buy our first shares. We wanna make sure that we're on buy versus sell. So make sure you're on buy. You're gonna select your order type. So there are many different types of market orders, but just to make it easier and to be able to give the option of buying fractional shares, I recommend just going with market. If you wanna learn more about all the different types of order types, I'll actually link a video down below where I basically show you guys how to invest in the stock market and go through all these different types of orders. So I have market selected. I'm going to select the amounts I want to buy. And you can see one share of SPY is trading at about $370. If you don't have that much money to buy one entire share, you can do fractional shares with Webull. So let's say I want to buy 0.2 shares, right? So that's going to be a fractional order. It's going to tell you your estimated amount is $74.77. And from there, you're going to click buy and then click confirm right here. Okay, so I also have Moomoo pulled up here. I'm on VOO. This is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF that we briefly covered. This is also a really, really great program. Probably more features than Webull, but for beginners, it doesn't really matter too much. You can see one share of this is trading at $340.97. So what we're gonna go do is click trade down here. After that, we're gonna select the order type. So you guys can do a limit order if you want to get the absolute best price, or you can just do a market order to buy it right now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna enter the quantity of this ETF that we wanna buy. So I can use the plus arrows. And let's say I wanna buy one, right? Because with Moomoo, we can't unfortunately do partial shares, at least for most stocks, I believe. And so yeah, let's say I want to purchase one share of VOO, and then I'll click here, buy. It's gonna have me enter in my passcode. So after that, I'm gonna click buy again, and then I'll click confirm right here. But yeah, as you can see, super easy to do. Both these apps allow you to really buy these ETFs very, very easily. And as I mentioned earlier, if you guys do sign up using my exclusive link down below, they're gonna give you an absolutely crazy number of free stocks. So highly, highly recommend doing that if you have not yet already. Now this is gonna be a super short slide, but when it comes to investing, I just want you guys to know that you don't need to only invest in stocks, right? There are plenty of other things you can invest your money in. I'll never say I recommend investing all your money into a single asset because that's putting all your eggs in one basket. Something could go wrong and yeah, that won't end up too well. But yeah, just know that you can invest in yourself, in your own business, in your education, books and skills. You can buy courses, you can buy coaching, you can invest in networking, you can buy real estate, crypto. There's so many assets out there that you can invest and diversify your money with. In terms of the absolute highest ROI, that's always gonna be investing in yourself. And by that, I mean investing in your own business as well as your skills. So yeah, alongside investing your money in ETFs and stocks, I do recommend put some of your money into yourself. And now in terms of building your wealth in general, there are so many things you guys should be doing. Not only should you guys be getting the ball rolling when it comes to investing, you should also be focusing on how you can actually increase your income through valuable skills and habits. And yeah, like I said, that is going to be absolutely your biggest ROI return on investment. As you make more money, as you, you know, prioritize increasing your income, this is going to give you more money that you can invest in ETFs and other stocks. And yeah, I just really want to emphasize this guys, skills and experience will outperform any ETF or index fund, regardless of the economy. That's why I'm so passionate about self-improvement and entrepreneurship. That's why I talk about it so much on this channel. Now, I just wanna do a quick slide about taxes because you know taxes are important and it's important that we know how they work, especially when it comes to buying and selling ETFs. So essentially ETFs that are held for more than a year are actually taxed at the long-term capital gains rate. On the other hand, ETFs that are held less than a year are taxed at ordinary income rates. So for most people, the ordinary income rates are going to be substantially higher than the long-term capital gains rates. And that's why it just makes a lot of sense to hold whatever you invest in longer than one year. Now let's go over some of my final thoughts. So before investing in anything, you guys, I've said this many, many times on my channel, but you wanna do your own due diligence. And you want to invest at least one hour of research into any asset you buy. So let's say, for example, you guys want to buy some VOO, right? One of my favorite ETFs. Instead of just buying it because I talked about it, you guys need to look into it and look at you know what companies are 
are held, look at the S&P 500, if that's something you believe in, maybe look at Vanguard as a company, whatever, right? Just make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. Don't ever invest more than you can actually afford to lose. The biggest thing is that you just don't panic sell when things are down because yeah, especially right now, you guys, stocks are definitely down. A lot of people have lost money on paper if they purchased recently, but that's okay because if we look at the long term, they are gonna do perfectly fine. That's why I encourage you guys to invest for the long term, buy something, forget about it, and just you know become a millionaire that way. My favorite way to do it is just dollar cost averaging by putting in small amounts of money consistently every week or every month into your stock portfolio. Don't try and time market bottoms or don't try and sell when the market is high. You'll win sometimes, but you'll also lose sometimes. And I guarantee you, it's probably not gonna be worth it for almost 100% of you guys watching this. Rather invest that time into building up your own business and increasing your income. I guarantee you that's gonna pay off way more than you know, stressing over what stocks you're buying, when you're buying, when you're selling, all that stuff. Just pick an ETF that tracks some type of index that you believe in. Make sure it has a low expense ratio. Use a platform like Webull or Moomoo to buy it and then just hold it for as long as you can. That you guys is historically how investors have won and that's likely gonna be the way that you guys win as well. So yeah, that's it for this video. I just wanna end off with the final call to action. So if you guys have not yet already gotten your free stocks, definitely do that right now. The most important thing is you wanna take action, right? So you guys have watched this whole video. You've learned about ETFs. You've learned how to build one with under $100. Now's the time to actually take action and get started. I guarantee you, if you get the ball rolling as soon as you can at a young age, you'll be so glad that you did it in 20, 30, 40 years. And your bank account will also be thanking you. So yeah, happy investing. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more content just like this. I do a ton of videos about investing, personal finance, and entrepreneurship. Thank you so much for your time and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.